it's like, niece, girl, I want to feel bad for you. I do. But, girl, all the signs was there. I don't see what you ain't pick up on that, girl. Girl. What's going on, everybody? It's your favorite Auntie Momo. We are back again for another episode review of Catfish, y'all. This is season eight, episode 65. It's 65? Yeah, 65, Casey and Mike. Uh, before we get into this review, because I'm not going to make this review long at all, first and foremost, you already see she got her nails done. Bad bitch is back in effect, okay? <laughs> I'm all up in the Sam's and I'm pointing at your uncles, your baby daddies, and your daddies. Can you hand me that right up there? <laughs> Thank you so much. I just couldn't reach it because I'm so short. Thank you. Thank you. Spirit fingers all up in your baby daddy face. Y'all out in black, okay? Um, y'all already know how my church announcements go. If you're not yet subscribed to my channel, make sure you do that. Make sure your notification bells is turned on and all that good stuff. Y'all, these braids are so long. My cousin did my braids. Shout out to my cousin. She, she. Okay? Her information is down in my description box below. But they so damn long, they like booty braids. Girl, so every time they brush against my leg at the bottom, I think something is crawling on my motherfucking ass, bitch. Scaring the shit out of me. Um, side note. You gonna hear, listen, hold on. You hear him talking? That's my neighbor. He out there drunk and he trying to get his lady back. Cause I hear my I just go to Zoe. And I hear her all through the phone. No, no, pinching my head. No, like she cussing his ass out. I don't know what he did, but he's trying to get the bitch back. So if y'all hear some it's probably gonna be a mariachi band out there in a little bit because this nigga he drunk and he crying okay anyway speaking of drunk i'm a little tipsy myself because i am still celebrating my birthday okay do not play with your auntie momo because she is not one of them okay 42 you want to know why some of us saying i gotta walk out of uh got a uh hi say <laughs> i'm tipsy you want to know why some of us ain't gotta walk in with our tool out because our face card never declines. Bitch, get into it, yes. And um, I was supposed to have been back home from Miami last night, y'all. But I didn't get back home until this morning. And it's about 10 o'clock at night right now. Um, And so I've been drinking since I got home because I'm still celebrating my birthday or whatnot. You hear me trying to get that bitch back bad out there. But... I might be stumbling over my words, but y'all forgive me because it's still my birthday, okay? And if you want to send me a tip for this episode review, the cash tag is down below. Get into it, yeah. Go holla at your auntie. Let me know I'm doing a good-ass damn job, even if I'm drunk, okay? I'm going to give it to you. Miami don't owe me shit. I had a good ass time. I will say I was supposed to be back last night, but our flight was canceled. And bitch, you know when your flight is canceled, the airport cops you a free hotel room, right? Um, aside from the free hotel room, you get food vouchers. And and now the food vouchers, okay, it was twelve dollars a voucher a, a day or whatnot, twenty four dollars. But mind you. The good shit you want to get starting off at $15 a pop. I'm just saying, y'all come through with some bad vouchers, but I am not tripping on the free hotel room. It was definitely worth it. I loved it. I enjoyed it, okay? So I came home this morning, me and my baby sis, my travel buddy. And yeah, I've been asleep ever since I got home at around 11 o'clock today. And it's about 10 o'clock at night right now. And bitch, like I said, I just been feeling good. You know, I came home, I drank. I woke up from my nap, took another shot, went back to sleep, woke up and started drinking some more. And that's my business because I'm 42 and kissed my ass. Y'all, look, like, this episode wasn't too bad. It was annoying. I ain't going to lie. The catfish dude got on my damn nerves. I'm just saying. And y'all already know I'm tipsy, so I, I, I'm just going to give it to you straight. No chaser. I don't want this review to be long at all because there ain't a whole lot to go on and talk about. Baby niece, Casey, why you ain't see these signs, girl? Anyways, y'all, hopefully y'all ready for this review because I'm damn sure ready to uh, give it to you. I got my Seagrams with my ratchet ass. 
Let's go ahead and get up into it, y'all. All right, y'all, we got Casey, mother of two. She's from Michigan, okay? She has been talking to this dude named Mike for the last almost a year. He's from Tennessee. Now, she said he randomly added her on, I think it was IG or Facebook, something like that. I don't know, y'all remember, I might write it down. But she actually messaged him first. She slid into his DMs. They hit it off. They started talking on the phone and they bonded over the fact that their father was both missing in their lives. Now, mind you, they talked on the phone, but they've never FaceTimed because this nigga told her that he had a flip phone. Now, off the rip, when he said flip phone, I said, girl, don't nobody but niggas in jail got flip phones if they out in the free world, <laughs> if they out the free. I'm just saying they only got a flip phone because the flip phone was the only thing they knew before they got their ass to prison which is probably before the 99 to the 2000 when girls was working with some ass shit and they was bad shit. But I'm just saying, she also says that he bonds with her sons online. They play video games. Now, hold on. Pause. Baby niece, sis, uh, Casey. Why is this man you've never met before in your life bonding with your kids over a video game? I don't care. I don't care that it's just a video game. That's a grown ass man. Still, it's a part of your life that you ain't even met face to face. You ain't even FaceTime with the dude on the phone. He giving you a whole bunch of damn excuses, but he can sit here and play Call of Duty and goddamn Fortnite and shit with your babies. No, hell no. Now she said they had made plans to meet up. He was supposed to go and meet her, but he ghosted her for about a month. Okay, out of nowhere, just goes to the hunt and pops back up almost a month later and says that, that he lost his phone. Got another phone. It's another flip phone. That ain't a hint right there. I don't goddamn know. But it was broke. He got a whole new flip phone and he got a whole new phone. And they just started picking back up talking like ain't nothing never happened. Like the nigga just ain't disappeared for a whole doggone month. Where the hell you been at? I done had a whole lot of damn questions. Now, he goes to her a second time. He claims, and again, it was for a month. He claims that he had to get off the grid. What that mean? Who you running from? Niggas that got to get off the grid and hiding from the police or baby mamas. Adult men who they owe money to. I'm just saying it was just weird. Now, he has sent her money before. He sent her $125 altogether. The first time he sent her, I think $100, she said, from Walmart. And the other two times, he sent her money through Cash App. When he sent her money through the Cash App, it came up as Todd Brown. Supposedly, that's his real name, Todd Todd Michael Brown or Michael Todd Brown. That's what he told her the name was. Now, again, the shit is sketchy as hell. How can you send money through the cash app or whatnot, but you can't get on the phone and FaceTime me because you got a flip phone? I'm bitch, all the signs was there. So they look at the photos that she has of him. He also sent her a minute long message. Cammy listened to it off the rip. Cammy was like, oh, fuck. That's a Negro you talking to. <laughs> that nigga is African-American who you talking to just based on the voice alone. And like she said, all the black people seeing this is going to definitely know. That's a Negro you talking to. And I thought the same thing. Oh, girl, there ain't no white, white boy with curly hair. That's, that's a black boy you talking to. So it's time for the investigation. They search the, they search the IG photos and the friends um, list that he has on there. They see off the rip that they, all of his friends on there are women. He don't have no male friends on there. All of them are, are, are women, right? A little bit suspect. Then, like I said, they search um, through his photos. They don't find nothing on the photos. They end up searching the old flip phone phone number. Don't know if to come up. They search the new flip phone phone number, and they end up finding an IG. An IG comes back to a Robert Champion that's associated with the phone number, right? They also end up going and um, finding a page for Robert Champion, and the guy on the page looks like he could be mixed, looks like he could be of African descent, could be the link up or the match to the voice that they got, you know, um, whatnot that they heard. Now, they also searched through Robert Champion's friends list, and on the friends list, they see that he's also friends with Mike on there. So they like, okay, now the, the, the phone number, the first flip phone phone number didn't work. The second one come up to a Robert Champion. It just so happened he's friends on there with Michael Brown or whoever the heck this dude is supposed to be. A whole lot of suspect shit going on. 
They also see that Robert Champion works at Walmart again. Sus got money sent to her from Walmart, suspect as hell. They search Michael Todd, uh, Todd Michael Brown to see what they can find on him. Child, they search his name, file a whole ass goddamn police record. Bitch, vandalism, uh, evading arrest, theft, burglary, and also sees that he has an alias name of Robert Champion, right? So somehow they figured that either the Robert dude that the IG that they found is involved or he could have just been making that shit up with the alias thing that he got as Robert Champion. Either way it go, the nigga got a long ass goddamn rap sheet. They already figuring out some shit about this nigga that just don't seem good. The next day they get up with Casey, try to give her the tea. She confused, look like she about ready to cry in a goddamn car. Nee said, fuck it, I'm gonna go ahead and call Mike. They call Mike's number, he doesn't answer the phone, so they end up sending them a text message. They end up calling Robert's number that they found when they did the search, right? Robert answers the phone, and uh, of course, Neve gives him the tea on what's up. He says that he does know who Mike is. Mike is his half brother. All right. Now he says that he doesn't know at the moment if Mike has a girlfriend or anything like that. Need also ask him what's up with the cash app, man, because your name came back attached to a cash app that was sending Casey money. He says that people will randomly send him cash apps and be like, hey, can you send this to somebody else? Nigga, what kind of bootleg Western Union ass shit is that? They don't even doggone sound right when he said that. I was like, no, nah, y'all need to go ahead and and, and Check this nigga out. That don't make no doggone sense. He's sketchy as hell. Anine tells him, well, since you know who your half-brother is or whatnot, go ahead and holler at him. Let him know we need him to holler back at us because this is some shit that we got to figure out. This dude, Robert, say, and now probably ain't a good time for you to talk to him, but uh, I'll see what I can do. Why? Where he at? Is he in jail? So then you say, fuck it, let's go ahead and go to Tennessee because if we already in Tennessee, then he can't turn us away if we already there. I was like, go ahead and swing my Chuck Lisa. I know, that's in Mississippi. See, I'm drinking. I've been drinking. I've been drinking. The next day, Neve ends up getting a text message from Mike saying, I guess I'll meet you if you serious. You can come to Tennessee. i send you an address. I'll be right outside of Nashville. Neve was like, the fuck what you mean if we serious? <laughs> Nigga, we already, we already waiting on your ass at the door. So they show up to the address that he gave them, you know, the instructions, whatnot said to go around the back to the barn. Don't knock on the door. When they go to the house, you know, of course, they don't go to the house like he said. They go back to the barn. And like Candy said it before, I, I mean, the shit I was thinking like, bitch, this is given very much so Texas Chainsaw Massacre. This is given very much so house on the hill. Very much so the goddamn haunting. What you mean come around the bank where the barn is and come in through the back? Child, but they do it. You know, Neve ain't scared of shit. Neve put his life on the line like a goddamn military man. He goes and they see and out pops White Mike. It's Mike, y'all. It's the real dude. It's really him. Looking just as God, I'm going to say, I'm going to say it. Because I've been drinking, looking just as goddamn greasy as he wants to be. Child. I want to get one of them red facial sponges and just sop the whole, just sop his whole goddamn body up. He just looked real dingy and greasy. I'm sorry. Nothing against him personally. I'm just saying, somebody could say something about me. I wouldn't give a fuck. But either way it go, that nigga look real greasy and shit. It was really him. Said his name is Todd Michael Brown. Um, says he really did have a flip phone. And you know why he had a flip phone? Because the nigga was in prison. Okay? He had been in jail. He said from the time he was 13 to 18. And I think he said 18 and 27 to 19 and 26. So, but the nigga had been in jail. Okay? That's why he had a flip phone. Okay? So, Casey, when he said he had a flip phone, know this. Niggas that ain't been in the world for a minute, they got them flip phones. If they ain't got flip phones because they've been in prison, they trap boys. He says that Robert is actually his half-brother and that he had him, you know, cover for him on the phone. He actually did have him send her the money through Cash App or whatnot. He said he actually cared about Casey. But as far as physically being, you know, in love with her, wanting to be with her, no. And do you want to know why? McGreasy McGreaseball said he had a girlfriend already and a baby on the way. Had no plans on telling Casey whatsoever. That's another reason why I'm going in on a dude like 
like I am. Because you was just basically, and he wasn't, it wasn't even like you was using her for money. You was using her for companionship, basically. You couldn't even be clean and tell the girl that she wasn't even really fucking feeling her like that. He said if he was feeling her like that, it would have been this girl, this girl, that girl, baby all the way and all of that. I totally agree. Like, Casey, girl, just... Girl, and he was sort of being an asshole about it too. It's like, nigga, you can't come on here looking like you just took a whole dip in a bucket of Crisco, okay? And then try to have nerve to come on here and be an asshole about it, talk about when well, you hit me up, which she did, but still, you it was the asshole in you that led the shit to keep going on the way it did. Y'all, I'm drinking and I don't want to keep on going on a rant about it, but y'all, um. He got the nerve to tell her, you know, I'm really not feeling you like that. I got a baby on the way. If you want to wait around three to six months, maybe, and see what happened. See if maybe I'm feeling you. Bitch, this ain't no job application. You're not going to keep my resume on file in case you decide to come backtrack if you... What? No. Fuck no. So, girl, Casey get in the car and she crying. Baby sister needs. He was not worth it. I'm sorry. <laughs> he wasn't worth it, girl. He was a big-ass grease ball. I'm just going to say it. He wasn't goddamn worth it. And, Mike, you wrong. I'm sorry, Mike. You wrong. You, you was really wrong for the way that you did her. Because you could have you kept the real with her off the rip, off the jump, okay? So, child, come to damn two-month follow-up. She ain't talked to him. Good, as you shouldn't, because his ass ain't damn worth it. And they ain't even giving no follow-up on him. I don't know if the nigga back in jail or what. But y'all, P.O.P. holding down. That was the end of the episode right there. Y'all already know if it was anything that I missed, drop it down below. Thank y'all so much for watching. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And your Auntie Mo going to see y'all in the next video. Peace out. Mm -hmm.